Love it or hate it, Maslin Beach has cemented itself in history as South Australia's cult favourite. And here to talk about it, giving us a behind the scenes from scenes of the behind. <laughs> uh, we have the film's writer, director and producer, Wayne Green. Leading actor Simon, played by Michael Allen. <laughs> Simon's on-screen girlfriend, played by Eliza Lovell. <laughs> and Madeline Beach's hazardous ice cream truck driver, played by Gary Waddell. <laughs> Craig, we, we, we've got Noel Purden here as well. Noel Purden? And Edmund Pegg. Oh, who, 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 who is in the film? Fantastic. Okay. Well, <laughs> so we'll open the. Uh, we'll, we'll, everybody's open to uh, ask questions, but we might start with you, Wayne. Uh, what inspired you to come up with such a crazy concept for a film? Um, I, I used to carry around a little notebook, and I'd write down things as I thought of them. And uh, when I look back over sort of four or five years, the idea of making a romantic comedy on the beach kept coming up in all the notes, so I knew that there was something there that was sort of driving me along. Uh, I will say, when, when I sat down to write the script, I decided for two months I would sit on my sofa from nine to one every day and just write the craziest things I could think of. <laughs> and at the end of two months, I had about 200 pages of vignettes. They were just vignettes. And uh, later on, when we raised the money for the film, I had to write a narrative through there. But I'd like to just read to you from the original script, which you know got changed, uh, about what, what happened just at the start. And I think this sort of sums up the intention of the film. Uh, in the original version, Simon just comes alone to the beach. And he says this, I don't expect anyone to understand what the following stories mean. I don't know what they mean. I don't feel the same about nudity as most people. I like it. It doesn't offend me. I like the sensual delight of being naked, and I like to see other people naked. Also, I like to laugh. Laughter takes away the misery of meaninglessness. Preston Sturgis once said, there's a lot to be said for making people laugh. That's all some people have. I don't believe in Plato and his perfect forms. I don't believe in the soul. My influences have been Robert Crumb and Nietzsche. <laughs> but I do believe in love. It has the power of redemption. And I believe in Maslin Beach, one of the most beautiful spots in the world. That is really beautiful, Wayne. Thank you so much. Um, so um, this, this film has received such mixed reviews. Um, it's been savaged by Matt and Dave on ABC Radio, but it's also been adored by Peter Goers just re recently. Um, why do you think there's such a great divide in opinion to this film? I was just talking to somebody who arrived, the German girl there, with yes, and she was just saying about how in Germany nudity is just taken as, you know, you'd go to a park and everybody's naked in the park. So I always, I always had that to, some, 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 it's an oasis. <laughs> and so I think, I think because we've got an English heritage, we're a, a little bit more reserved about nudity. So I'd always, already picked up from Italian films and French films, this relaxed attitude. You know, someone would come out of the shower and they'd be naked and nobody would say anything. So I wanted to replicate Eric Rommer and some of the um, filmmakers that were, 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 were just having this casual sort of approach. So I think the shock and, and awe that's come is, you know, some people believe that nudity is related to sexual uh, trouble and mischief and advances and, and brutality. But I wanted to make a film where people were naked, sitting around talking about the meaning of life and love, and the nudity didn't mean anything. So I think that's where, you know, People who, who don't like it, usually the nudity offends them. 
and people who do like it, they often criticise the film, but they say, but there's something about it that I like, and I can't quite tell, which I think in the end, it's uh, about love, you know, the story's about love. Mm. I agree, um, as a viewer, I don't find the nudity torrid at all, like, um, it, it becomes a bit maybe awkward at the beginning, but the more um, you watch it, um, you suddenly become less aware of the nudity and you start to, uh, you know, enjoy the story and the characters. Um, I was just wondering whether, like, um, perhaps maybe Michael and Eliza, whether um, you felt the same way as actors, obviously having to take your clothes off filming, filming whether you felt the same way as the, as the audience did. Um, uh, look, I, I've got to say, um, it's intimidating to walk into work on a Monday morning <laughs> and get your gear off. But um, the words that Wayne just expressed in the those lines that, damn, I wish I had, um, and the essence of his approach to the to the film in general. Um, what just permeated the set. So you, you did actually just feel like you were going to work. Um, it wasn't an issue. Um, you forget about it pretty quickly anyway. I mean, when you're filming, you've got so many other things to worry about, light and, and this and blocking and blah, 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 everything that goes on with filming a scene. So, and you've got work to get through during the day. So, you know, after five minutes, you, it's just, you've got work to do. So you just get on with it. So, and, and I think, um, <coughs> The, like I said, the essence of, the, of, of Wayne's intention um, probably rang through the whole set the entire time. So no one, it, it didn't feel like, um, it didn't feel dirty or uncomfortable or any of those awkward feelings at all. So you, you, you tend to forget about it pretty quickly, really. Um, so uh, Maslin Beach is such an amazing backdrop. Um, the majestic cliffs and everything like that, but surely there must have been some challenges filming at a location like that, but particularly when you've got other beach goers there. Did, were they comfortable with like a film crew there and their family crew? I think there were one or two occasions where, where we did have to um, negotiate with some beach goers on the odd occasion. Um, I don't know, were there any other occasions weighing like that? I don't I... Know. Oh, gosh. But they were mainly naked, weren't they? Most of them. Well, I remember somebody dying in the sand dunes. Oh, yeah, that's that right. Was, yeah. That was the... Can you remember that? I just had this flash. I haven't thought about it for years. And all of a sudden, someone... I remember there was an ambulance on the beach and someone had a heart attack and they died in the sand dunes. You, you, you remember, uh, we, we were shooting this film, uh, the, the scene, and we were running a little bit late. And uh, then suddenly someone came running up and said, there's a dead body in the sand dunes. <laughs> now, you well, don't quite read us to what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I remember thinking to myself, and he said, you know, could we borrow your phone or you know, to get an ambulance here? And I remember thinking, gee, you know, we're trying to get this scene finished. <laughs> and, you know, he's dead, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's not so we can help. And so I said, look, you know, we're just in a bit of a rush at the moment, so we can't really do anything. And I turned back to the crew and the cast. Everyone's going, what the fuck? <laughs> so I said, oh, no, no, sorry. So we stopped the help. You're right, it was a strange instance, wasn't it? <laughs> And the other thing I remember yeah. was I was wearing bikinis, right? Which may be a good thing, may not be a good thing. Maybe it's better to have not worn anything in some ways. But I remember I think the final scene, and it was a really hot day, and I remember lying down on a plastic bag and getting the imprint of the plastic bag on my back. It had something like, you know, the sunglass hut or something that was tattooed on my back. And we were like, oh my God. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, one of my favourite scenes is actually um, possibly that, that final scene that you're talking about. Um, it's a, it had a beautiful piano piece toward the end and it really evoked some great tenderness. And I, I actually wrote to um, Wayne just recently because I've been looking on Spotify and the internet everywhere to get a copy of this song to play. But apparently um, it was an original piece for this. Yeah, there was a young lad, Robert Crowell, uh, from Adelaide, and uh, he did all the music for Maslin Beach. But he went over to America and uh, 
did a whole lot of big TV shows and uh, dramas and whatever, working on Universal a lot. So he's been living in Los Angeles for the last 20 or 30 years. But mm. he studied at the Adelaide Conservatorium. He just knew how to do music. So, and often I would find a piece of music and then he would imitate it because we couldn't afford to buy the rights to it. So he would do some variation. <laughs> 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 which is a great school. Awesome. So um, I'm just interested, how did the cast come to about, um, be about being part of the film? Uh, Gary Wayne Wayne. asked me. <laughs> and he said, would you uh, do this film it's about Maslin's Beach? And uh, I went, oh yeah. <laughs> What's the role? Ice cream man. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Am I uh, naked? No, thank fucking Christ. <laughs> How much are you going to give me? <laughs> and uh, I think it was only... Edmund here and I were the only ones. Did you wear a bikini the whole time? I think so. Yes. Oh, I think so. That's right. That was a part. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't take my clothes off. I mean, I probably would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. No, the, the role was about Marcy. She, did, she didn't agree yeah. with me. So it was us three. Hmm. Edmund, you and me. Who had clothes on. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe we should take a close Thank up now. Thank God for that. No, I'm <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Gary, <laughs> <laughs> have you been to Maslin Beach before? Because your yes. role... I had been to Maslin Beach. I was living in Adelaide at the time. Mm. And uh, I used to go to Star Greece. Mm. And plus, I loved that beach. It was a fabulous beach. And especially summertime was amazing. Absolutely. It still is. The, the ice cream truck driver was like a major part of going to Maslin mm. Beach. I don't think that's around anymore, is it? What uh, star agrees? No, 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 the, the ice cream truck. That, 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 oh. was, that was run by the deli, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The deli. Yeah. Yeah, that's I think it's, yeah. Five, six years ago. And, um, yeah, so that's how it happened. Um, and I thought, yeah, why not? Let's do this film. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> What about yourself, um, Michael and Eliza? Um, I'm trying to think back. We had been friends for a while, because I'm not even through any, I think. But, can I just yeah, can, um, and I when, used to when I was house. living in North Adelaide and you were studying drama at Flinders, yeah. you came and was a, you were a housemate for, a, for a, just to earn some extra money. Yeah, now, house cleaner. A house cleaner. <laughs> no, a lifestyle facilitator, <laughs> is what we called it at the time. That's, that's right, but Eliza, at 17, cleaning my house, that was a dangerous situation. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and I think from that... I don't know. You were I reading think... for my audition. I remember that. Yeah, I think I just finished drama school when it was made. Yeah, because I, I finished in 92. When you were at my house, we, we agreed that we'd make a film at some time, and it took about another five years. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I think dimension setting in already. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm trying to put the pieces all together. But yeah, yeah. So I was at the audition. You, you read for my audition. Oh. Yeah, so. Thanks. All right. There you go. It must have been chemistry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I um, remember walking into an audition. Uh, Eliza was reading. So I think you two had been working on the script for a while. That was the impression that I got when I did it. And um, I was fresh out of I, I, I think, as well. yeah, Eliza was the first, first person I went yeah, to about yeah. getting this, this, this thing going. Oh, wow. I have a discount. Um, uh, a curious memory of uh, filming Maslin's Beach. A, I had a part which was rather doubtful whether I could play it because um, I thought it would, might get a, a bit of bad notice for it because I was playing the part of a man who has uh, sex with his daughter. <laughs> but that didn't put me off so much as seeing as i was looking down uh, wayne was doing a, a, a sharp angle up and as i was looking down of course wayne was also naked <laughs> <laughs> and all i i looked down and all i could see was this willy in the sand <laughs> but you know i think that was a really beautiful thing that you did i distinctly remember you saying you know if you were going to challenge your actors to do you know to be naked all the time that you would then also be naked yeah. and it was an incredibly like it really changed the dynamic of the way that 
many people felt, I think. It was good, it was great. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, should, I should just say too with Edmund, uh, Angela Heeson's here and uh, Angela uh, did all the casting for the film so uh, that was an amazing thing to do because she was flying in the face of convention in a sense. But you know, she, I remember her ringing up and saying we've got Edmund Pegg, we'll come along uh, about a part. You can't ask him to read because he's an international star and he usually charges much more but he's going to make some concessions here and whatever but uh, you know, don't, don't press him too much because we could lose him. So I was under a lot of pressure when Edmund came and I thought, geez, he's going to need this. Is, but you know, Edmund turned out to be such a great uh, um, champion of the film and that scene that he was playing, you know, is based on Anais Nin's life. So Anais Nin was going through a bout of nymphomania and uh, she was uh, making love to Henry Miller. Uh, she was, while she was married, she was uh, uh, having it off with Ant Anton Antonin Otto, the poet, and then she went to seek help with a psychiatrist, a top psychiatrist, Dr Otto Rank, who Noel Purden played with great charm, and Dr Otto Rank bonked her as well. <laughs> and, uh, and then he said, the trouble with your nymphomania is that you, you, you've got a, a desire for your father who left you when you were a little girl. So then she sought out her father and made love to him in a, in a hotel room in the south of France. So, of course, Ed's looking at the script saying, oh, I'm... <laughs> so he and Madeline worked on it together to just sort of, uh, you know, good, but, you know, both of them were incredibly brave because it looks like you're sort of um, suggesting incest is okay, but it was just looking at Anais Din's life, and I thought, a mature woman who decides to make love to her father after being estranged for 20 years, is that still incest? I suppose it is, but it's not in the same category as... Uh, as so it just raised questions about the whole notion of what that meant. Um, and I, I should also, too, uh, just say uh, that um, uh, Gary Waddell and uh, Michael worked really well, uh, you know, not rewriting, but sort of redeveloping their parts. Uh, they were in harmony, they were saying things that they, they could do, and so I think that, that was a tremendous... And, you know, when Gary came along, uh, such a professional actor, uh, he just took over that part of Ben and made it something bigger than, you know, what, what was intended, but it was just really confident the way you, you just took charge of it, and, uh, and I kept watching and saying, oh, I'm amazed at what he's doing. And I should say one other... Oh, God, sorry. Yeah, I love it, Adley. That's the only way, you know. And plus you get more lines if you keep on ad living all the time. And, uh, you know, and you get your money's worth. And uh, it was really great working with you. I tell you, it was yeah, great. Really we had fun. good fun. I should also create just one other thing, because I've got Noel Purden here with me. Mm. Um, when I was writing, you know, two-thirds of the way through writing the script, I hit a wall. I, you know, so I've got Emmaus Din running around the beach with Henry Miller. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> And uh, I, for five days I couldn't write anything, so just I thought maybe I'm making a big mistake here and it's all a bit of a mess. And I needed to, you know, get over that somehow, so I, I actually rang Noel Purden, and I didn't know Noel very well at that time. I said, could we meet at Scoozy's? I just wanted to talk to you, and he didn't ask me what for, he just came along. And I sat down and said to him, you know, I've got this crazy story about you know, Nietzsche and Buddy and Ace Nin on the beach and whatever, and, and, and then he said, really kind words. He sort of said something that I think everybody would love to hear is, you know, I think you're doing the right thing and from what you said to me it sounds interesting so I think you should continue. That was an amazing moment, Noel, because I went back, suddenly I felt relieved, I was not crazy and that meant so much to me. Uh, and then of course when I finished I gave the script to Noel to read and, and he said, yeah, no, I think you're on the right track and then he came and played the part of Dr Otto Rank and it's hilarious the way he plays that part, he just sort of, you know, takes it on and satirises the whole thing, which is what I wanted. What my means is that I'm a ham. <laughs> <laughs> That's the delicious part. And I didn't know I was going to be offered it when I read the script. Um, I'd been living in Europe for 12 years and more recently I'd been teaching film at Flinders. So I'd come back to Australia and I'd seen the, the rebirth of the Australian film industry in South Australia and I loved it. And I'd already acted in a number of films by Scott Hicks and um, uh, in television serials and so on. Uh, when I read this script, a smile never left my face. It was very unlike other scripts that I've been given to read where I thought, how do I tactfully say this is bullshit? <laughs> uh, whereas this reminded me very much of exactly the, the people that 
way as he wrote it, we might have been very much particularly of the films of Eric Romare. And I thought, how relaxed this is, you know. Nothing really happens. People just go to the beach. They have a good time. Things are worked out. Some of them are having quarrels. Uh, and then I got to the scenes with Anais Nin and Arto and Rank and her daddy, and I howled with laughter because um, I was also just reaching the end of five years of psychoanalysis, <laughs> and it all seemed terribly real <laughs> that this was the sort of thing that might very well happen. And uh, as Wayne said, uh, Anais Nin was a, an extraordinarily beautiful uh, woman who wrote some of the most subtle pornography that you can imagine. She collaborated with um, one of her lovers, Henry Miller, on uh, a dollar a page. So they churned out this stuff in Paris. And she also took uh, Arto as a lover. Um, so none of, none of this seemed in any way offensive at all. It seemed, it seemed surreal but it also seemed every day in the way that European cinema was uh, absolutely every day. I thought this marked a new direction in Australian cinema. So I was happy to say to Wayne, I think this is terrific, you know, go for it. And after that, um, when he came to cast it, he offered um, me the part of, of Rank. And uh, then I was surprised that my current lover was also offered um, quite a big part in the film. I won't say who that is, you'll find out when you see the film. All right, I have a question from Facebook. Um, George Matto Matto Kassar says, is there any sequel in the pipeline? Uh, PJ Hogan's doing uh, uh, Muriel's Wedding the Musical, so maybe <laughs> all kicking, dancing. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think I could go back to that because that that frame of mind I was in then. Um, uh, I don't in this current environment. I don't think you could do it in, in, in the way that you did. So it was it was a different era. I think. Mm. Um, Natalie Hartman is asking here. Um, how big was your crew and how long did the production take? Three weeks, uh, and we had about a crew of about eight, I think, something like that. I'd been working on films where we'd have a crew of 50, you know, had a couple of million dollars to make, so to do this film for $150,000 with a tight little crew, how intimate was that? You know, we all knew each other, we'd go out in the truck together each day up to the mm. beach, so it's a, it's a far greater beautiful experience when you're working, with, and everybody then has to pitch in, so we all did each other's jobs and whatever, so it was great. Mm. Um, so maybe throwing it out to um, the stars, um, what was your favourite moments with filming? Like some highlights you may have. I think the favourite moment for me was spending rather a long time talking about the ending. Mm. <clears throat> Which I don't really remember in detail, but what I do remember is um, your generosity as a director and writer to listen to the artist or the young artist <laughs> as well especially was amazing and I really feel like we built that final scene together. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Can I just say something there Eliza? Mm. And w w Eliza and I had a, almost like a little tiff at that at the scene because I was thinking we're making a comedy and I said you know the breakup needs to be funny like Woody Allen would do or something just you know and Eliza said no I think this needs to be serious. I remember thinking, oh no, Flinders drama said, you know, it's going to be all <laughs> formal or whatever. And, you know, but she was adamant. She said, I think this needs to be serious. So I said, all right, let's we'll shoot it your way. And then, you know, I think. We I shot it your way too, I think, didn't did, we? Oh, we were going to do that afterwards. Yeah, yeah, maybe we did. But uh, you were, you know, Eliza, now 20 years later, you were dead right. I loved the way you played that scene. It gave a bit of heart and depth to the story at the end. And your instinct was absolutely correct. I, just, I remember at the time feeling really strongly that the relationship needed to have value. 
it needed to have value. That's all I remember thinking is, no, no, it needs value. You need to honour that relationship. Otherwise, it just becomes, yeah, anyway, interesting. Uh, oh, me? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I've, I've said mine. <laughs> um, Favourite moments? Uh, I think it's hard to pick one. It was the whole experience the, from the ensemble, the small crew. So it really was like working with a, a small ensemble or troupe of people, uh, which is um, great. Um, and a lot of camaraderie in that. Um, Wayne's um, vision and his uh, skill as a director, which has al again already been mentioned, to work with actors to find uh, stuff, which again is symptomatic of being in an ensemble and that you're all collaborating together. So that was great. Um, I loved working with Gary. Like it was, like you, Gary mentioned that we did a lot of improvising and stuff, and I have to say that it was and to Angela as well. This was my first um, film gig uh, at all, um, first major gig since leaving college myself. So the opportunity to take on such a responsibility was amazing and to work with a crew like this who had so much experience. So having that first uh, virgin experience on film with such an, uh, an established group of filmmakers was just, you know, groundbreaking, set me up for, for life really. Uh, and what you can do on film. I think personally, probably my favourite shot to uh, shoot was the last one um, in the sunset. Mm. Um, and for no other reason, personally, than I'm a terrible squinter. So I, I really don't cope well in a lot of bright light. And so spending three weeks on the beach doing that, I was really grateful to have a scene where I could open my eyes and look into the camera and, hey everyone, I've got them. <laughs> I'm not just a squinter. So that was my own personal little moment of, of joy filming. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, my favourite thing is always, I love going to work when I'm an actor. I love turning up. And turning up at Maslin's Beach was fantastic. Uh, I love putting on my cosy, I love being around actors, I love it when they say action, and that's the happiest moments of my life, you know, besides in my family, you know, like, that's what it's all about for me. I just love being in front of that camera. I love creating, and like most actors do, you know, like, because that's what we are doing, is creating, creating characters, creating, you know, storylines, and and working with a director, you know, who uh, gives you uh, a lot of rain. And like Wayne just let me do a lot of stuff, you know, like that a lot of directors would say, no, please don't do that, you know, do this, you know. Like, and and, and I, I accept, you know, but th this film was really like, it was such a small group of people. I've been used to working like, Wayne, you know, like with sometimes a hundred crew, you know, like, and uh, working on this small film was joyous because it was beautiful fucking weather, wasn't it? That was great. <laughs> we were really lucky on this one, and uh, and you got you get to know people, and you are a family for that short amount of time, and it's always it sort of pulls at your heart when it's over because you think you're sure. Sure, we've done everything. Isn't there something else? You know, like, and uh, that's how I feel. I, I never think of one moment um, on a film. I just think of the whole process of it, and I love it. Um, Craig, we probably we're only on time, but we're, aren't we? So yes. I just wonder if I could just invite a couple of other people up on yes. stage. So uh, we, we've mainly got the actors up here tonight, but um, and, and there's a number of other people here. John Doherty. I wonder, if John, you can come. Uh, Rod Bolton, and Robbie Ho, and Rosita, great. I missed anybody. And Deidre, yes, yes, come on up, please. Uh, is Nicola Mill here? No, she's not. Yeah. Um, 
All right, and uh, Rachel will hold you back for a moment because I'll try to do something here. And uh, sorry, Colin. Uh, Colin, yes, like, of course. Come up, Colin. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I just just want to get a, get a brief comment. But uh, Rodney uh, was the cinematographer, and you know worked under very difficult conditions with 16 mil film changing in the sand, you know, in the, in the light all the time. But, you know, I think you'll see just lovely moments that he captured uh, of, of Madison Beach, that romance uh, of, that, of that beach. But, well, uh, yeah, 20 years on, I'm still trying to remember. <laughs> it was it was a very fun, fun shoot to be on. I was very privileged to uh, get the opportunity. It was my first feature film. And uh, yeah, again, very small crew, a uh, great cast to work with. It was amusing. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a interesting times, and it was it was difficult. But the uh, I think the, the the dude dying in the sand dunes was. <laughs> we could have made a short film about that rescue <laughs> of the police. Really, it would have been something else. Like that the dead but, uh, <laughs> No, it was uh, it was good. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Uh, it. It was good because we didn't have much equipment, did we? But you know, you were just on the ball all the time, getting in that great shot of the lady singing on the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. was great. That was wonderful. Uh, I had to say something about John Doherty. Um, when we cast the leading lady, uh, the leading girl, she was she was really lovely, and I think you would really like her. But uh, you know, she hadn't done any acting before. And, I did a run through with her and she wasn't delivering lines for a while and I thought, oh no, she looks right but maybe can't act. And so I then called John Doherty and I said, John, um, you know who I'd cast her, I said, could you work, because I knew you were very good at drama, drama and I said, could you work with um, Bonnie Jay and just see, you know, and you transformed her ability to perform. So that was such a dramatic intervention on your part. And then, of course, you played a great part with being Eliza's lover. And <laughs> you I look fantastic. You about me then. No, no, no. <laughs> you were the consummate professional and the skill, so. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, Bonnie was, I remember Bonnie was really great to work with. She was really receptive to, to ideas. And I remember Angela um, casting this film and it was, it was all a bit unusual. Like, yes, everyone's naked. And I was like, okay, including the crew, which I'm not sure the whole crew was naked. I think Wayne was, but I, my, my understanding was the whole crew was going to be, which was weird. But um, yeah, I, rem I remember getting a phone call from a friend in London and he'd, he'd seen the film and he just turned on the TV, and I think this is a credit to Rod, that he, um, he saw the opening scene in the sky and just said, that's South Australia, and continued watching. And then, of course, you know, everything unfolded and hung out, so to speak, and um, yeah, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a pleasure to work with Bonnie, and um, it was a pleasure to work with Eliza, and it was a hoot, so yeah. Well, I, have, I have to say, John hasn't aged at all. He looks fantastic still. Um, who we've got now? Uh, Racina? Yes. Uh, so there's a, a great commedia dell'arte type scene uh, when uh, Racina is the wife of a man that was approaching our leading lady to try and get and have sex for $2,000 or whatever. And uh, so Racina believes that this woman's a, a seductress and trying to take her husband away. And so uh, later on in the film, she sort of tackles uh, the leading lady and drags her to the ground. So that was quite a good scene. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And, but, <laughs> but then I felt really bad. I thought, did I hurt you? <laughs> you were pushing her face into the sand. And <laughs> but it was fantastic working with you. And, Really, really enjoyed. I've done a lot of films in South Australian Film Corporation with costumes and everything, but I really, really enjoyed my time with you guys. It was fantastic. You were a good sport, I seen you. You played it, you know, just perfectly. It was a lot of fun. And Deidre, um, you came along and uh, were the matchmaker, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, this is, I hadn't met Deidre before, but I think you, you know, came along and you, you had to bring two lovers who were cheating on each other, but then by a dating agency they'd been brought together. So uh, you, you made something out of that. Oh yes, I had to say, my firm is very reputable. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end I said, well, you go after her, because I know a lot about men. I remember that line. <laughs> it was very reassuring, and the way you were dressed, it looked uh, yeah, convincing. I was covered from head to foot. <laughs> <laughs> but very stylish. 
And Robbie Hogue, one of my favourite uh, people who came along to play the confused uh, person looking for guidance and meaning in life, and you had sort of three scenes, and they were all sort of quite daring scenes in a way, so it was, you, you, I think you played that perfectly, plus you, could, you were a musician, so you added something that I didn't expect. Yeah, I did, yeah. I'm still confused and looking, so... <laughs> um, it was funny because there was a scene with the sandal, and they were my sandals as well, which... And at the time, I... Th in fact, when I saw the script, I said to Angela, I said, I want that part, because that's a parody of me. And, and it was great, because the shakuhachi and the, and the sandal was... It was totally, you know... And the line I remember is, Henry Miller believed that enough concentrated staring at the entrance to the womb might one day bring about a moment of enlightenment. <laughs> and, and every now and then it just, for whatever reason, jumps into my head. <laughs> for whatever reason. I wish I had your part on the day. It was really good. I, I, I must say, this is a credit to Angela. You know, when, when we were casting, the people you were sending, they just suited the part. I don't know how you did it, but they were She's all brilliant. No, no, they made me look good, that's all. Oh. Oh. Well, I think you've got an intuitive feeling about personality, and they all, you know, sort of convincingly play that part. Strip off in the audition, Angela. What's that? Did they have to strip off in the audition? No. <laughs> <laughs> you get the role for your skill. <laughs> um, I, I would say too with um, with. Uh, uh, Robbie, that in that first scene that he's in, he's, he's playing against Andy McPhee. And I thought Andy's performance, I can say it because he's not here, but it was the weakest part of the whole film because he, he looked like a bikey and he had a tooth missing. He didn't look like a Zen guru. But now he lives in Los Angeles and is doing all these great films with Hollywood stars and whatever. I'm thinking, good grief. <laughs> so, but I think he looks much better now than he did back, back then. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and uh, and Colin Moglia, uh, Colin played a, a small part in Maslin Beach, but he's we've been sort of interacting because he in 1980 came and played a part in Centre Spread, my first film. So yeah. I sort of feel like Colin monitors uh, a, a the development of the company and, and it appears all the time. Yeah. Well, I certainly think Maslin Beach was a good thing. Um, I always tell friends I, I went to Maslin Beach thinking I'd have a big part. But my part wasn't as big as I thought it was. It was cold. Morning. I mean, it was cold. It was cold. <laughs> so that was, it's, it's, it's always fun to do, and I encourage people to do things out of the norm all the time. You know, I, I had a regular job and 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 did things like that, but to have the opportunity to do uh, film work or extra work and, and things. I, I did some other films work. Um, it's good to see that the film's coming back to Adelaide again and we're amazed at how many films are made here in Adelaide, so, which is very good. All right, it's great. So I thought it'd be great to have everyone up here because you're going to see them on screen in a moment. Yeah. That's always a bit sort of special. Now, one thing I'd just like to do before we finish is that, um, you know, for, I'm sure there's many filmmakers here today, and so and, and writers and whatever. So you understand that that thing about you know, like when I was writing, got stuck and whatever. So art's a funny thing; it doesn't follow logic. And um, when I finished the film, uh, I felt a bit unsure about it. You know, in terms of have have we gone too far? Has it got? And I think maybe. I showed it to some people in my family or something, and my aunt saw it. It was like a mother to me, and I think she was a bit disgusted. And, uh, so, uh, I, I, strangely, I sort of just lost a bit of confidence in the film, and I put the film in the drawer under my desk, and that went on for three months, where I didn't show it to anyone because I thought I was going to, you know, it's going to be embarrassing for the actors and the whole thing. And. The point I'm making is now, it's, it's the little things that count in art, and Noel telling me, yeah, look, go on, was just the only sentence that I needed to continue on and finish the film, I couldn't stop. Uh, something happened, so for three months I've got the film sitting in the drawer, I'm not sure what's going to ever happen to it, if anything. And then, this girl who was in our film for just one or two lines, and I never saw her again, she went, Rachel Fury. Yeah. She rang me out of the blue and said, uh, Wayne, do you remember me? And I said, yeah, 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 sure. And she said, I'm just wondering, when can we, when can we see the film? I said, well, uh, you, know, I, you know, I'm just, you know, we're not sure at the moment, whatever. She said, oh, well, my friends and I would, would like to see it and we think it would be really good. 
I said, no, oh, you're okay. Well, I, I, I don't really know what's going on. I'll, I'll get back to you. She said, okay, I really look forward to it. We, we'll, we'll definitely come along and see it. So it was just funny that one little thing that someone said we would really like to see it mm. made. I don't know what would have happened to the film if you hadn't rung that day. Oh. So I'd like you just to come up here for a moment, if you if you can, <laughs> because uh, you know uh, Rachel sort of came. Sorry. It was the only part that Angela and I couldn't find anyone for, and she was due to we were due to shoot this on the Monday, and all weekend I drove around trying to search, trying to contact people. Someone said we've got a friend that could do it. So she said she would just come on. So she came along, sight unseen, and Ben falls in love with her instantly as soon as he sees her, you know, uh, Gary. Mm. <laughs> but um, right. just for that, that nice gesture that you did, uh, Rachel, that meant so much to me at the time, I'd like to oh, give you oh, the oh, Academy oh, Award. Oh, <laughs> your kindness oh and sweetness. Yes, and, and I think that's the thing, you know, with Angela and everybody, <laughs> everyone contributes in some way. So, Thank you. Work. I want to say that it's amazing that someone unexpected. I only, I only worked two hours on this, <laughs> on the beach. And um, you, I think you were naked at the time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Is there anything you remember? <laughs> um, oh, it was, you know, everything has been amazing. Um, thanks, Wayne. Thanks so much. I can't believe you. <laughs> All right, and, and, and one final thing. Uh, you know, I was thinking about doing a 20th anniversary of the film, and then. I thought, oh no, it's, nobody would want to come and it's too busy. Then Craig Jeffrey nice. rang up and said, Could I? Yeah. And out of the blue and said, Could I put on a 20th anniversary screen? And I thought, well, fantastic, someone's got to, got to do it. So thank you very much, Craig. Thank you. Before we launch into the film, I would like to thank Wayne Groom, obviously, for creating this amazing movie that 20 years on we are still appreciating and laughing at and and bringing people together to come and watch so thank you so much Wayne <laughs>